Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show with Marta and Anna. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge. And if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone, this is Marta, and this is Anna, and this is You've Got Five Options show with our wonderful technician Lasse. Hi. <laughs> Hello, and with our wonderful special guest Rachel Lule. Hi. Yes, Rachel is almost now our like, you know, regular. Regular. <laughs> <laughs> Yeps. Yes. yes, this is the third time we are uh, we are meeting with Rachel in a studio. Uh, this is yeah. our third program together. Yeah. So you were a guest on our live show about matchmaking and what is matchmaking. And guys, all the lonely souls out there that <laughs> are looking for a perfect partner, you should get back to that radio show. Last time on Monday with Rachel, we have started to discuss her five lessons learned on her way to becoming a successful entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And we've had some really great deep discussions about finding your why yeah. and having the right mindset yeah. and taking care of your habits. Yeah. And the radio magic started to happen at the very end of the show as well. Yes. <laughs> uh, so when Anna started to go deeply into philosophical point and how you can actually keep yourself in the right mindset yeah. by first, Rachel, you gave us this wonderful outlook on getting back to your why. Mm -hmm. So keep yourself in the right mindset by reminding yourself what mm -hmm. your why is. And then Anna have given us this great other perspective on actually looking at failures and rough times as lessons. Yeah. So what is it preparing me for? Mm -hmm. So All of you who have missed that episode, we encourage you so much to go back and find that episode either on YouTube. You just have to type you've got five options or at our website, the5options.com, five as a number. And if you're a podcast listener, you can also find you've got five options on your podcast app. So you guys have to listen to that. And today we will continue discussing those five lessons learned as Rachel has also explained to us that entrepreneurship for her has been an amazing opportunity to learn and grow. Yeah. Which is why we are discussing here five lessons learned. Yeah. Because it's just such a wonderful opportunity to learn and grow. Absolutely. But before we go to tip number three, would you ladies like to add something more to our second lesson learned about mindset and habits. I think I, I, I think I added too much. <laughs> no, I, I think I, I think um, personally, I was just saying to Anna that I really liked the way she saw the whole thing. And if anyone wants to know more about that, they should definitely go back to the past episode. But right now, I think we should focus on moving forward and Great. And talking yeah, about the rest in I order think for I us only, to have enough time. I think I only had one remark about the habits. Yeah. Because um, habits are also very important. And yeah. I have noticed that habits was one of my biggest challenges. Yeah. And you have also talked a little bit about how to motivate yourself to follow habits. Can you uh, sell to us, because we know already meditation yeah. is one of your daily habits that you are doing daily. Yeah. Do you have any other maybe one or two habits you would like to share that you are Absolutely. doing daily? Absolutely. I read daily. You read daily. One thing I think that really keeps me on my toes and keeps me sharp is reading. Um, and it, it could be about anything to do from personal growth to the ailment or to whatever it is that I'm working on that I want to be better at. If I want to achieve a skill or be better at something. But I do read a lot. And this is because when I look at the numbers, there is no, absolutely no successful entrepreneur out there who doesn't read. So if you want to become an entrepreneur, absolutely start reading. Because with reading, you'll keep on learning and acquiring information and growing. And then that will only make you better. 
So reading a lot. And if possible, one of the other things I do before I used to work out a lot. Now I'm not really working out a lot, but I do some form of exercise to keep my brain a little bit sharper and awake. Besides, because when you're meditating, you're really on the low. When you're reading, you're kind of also on the low. So something, take a walk, be out in nature to really keep you like, well, make all of your senses work at the same time. And yeah, few different habits. For me, reading absolutely and meditation a key and then some form of little exercise it doesn't have to be an hour at the gym it could be 10 15 minutes every day of you moving your body in some kind of way it really helps stimulate your whole you know mental and physical body and everything so that you can be in position to do what you want to do or you know be sharp on whatever it is you're going to do this is simply amazing because yeah. I also have read data about all of those most successful entrepreneurs and yeah. leaders and CEOs. They all exercise minimum five times a week. Yeah. And we are not talking about running a marathon or no. sitting for one hour in a gym, but they all exercise for at least 20 minutes, five times a week. They all read daily. Yeah. They also all plan their education and the trainings they will take in the future. Mm -hmm. And most of them either meditate or have some sort of a mindful break yeah. when they disconnect. Yeah. So I read it everywhere. And then wow. yet I hear this from you. So I guess this has to be true. Yeah. I, to be honest, I think that's one of the things that was keeping me back before. And, but I kept on hearing it from different coaches, from different successful entrepreneurs. And I'm like, why don't I change this? And I feel like regardless of where I'm going, I may not be successful yet, but I definitely feel like I'm on the right track because I'm equipping myself with different skills and having the right mindset. And I'm really learning every day and learning never stops. If you to be successful, learning never stops. So for sure, reading, exercising, keeping yourself, having some kind of spiritual Thing, spiritual break or whatever you can call it. It could be God. It could be, for me, it's meditation. It could be something else, mindfulness in any form, but something whereby you really just get to connect with you or with the higher energy that we do have in some kind of way. Yeah. Thank you for that. That really sums up in a right way because that's a nice connection between the mindset and the habit. Yeah. So thank you for that tip. And I hope our listeners are uh, right now planning their meditation or other form of mindful habit uh, <laughs> in their daily life. And yeah. now, Rachel, tell us what's the third lesson learned that you Acquired yeah, the third journey. lesson learned shouldn't really come as a surprise because it kind of speaks for itself. But as an entrepreneur, I think whatever it is you do, try to always make sure that you're basing it on solving a problem for people or for the world in some way or the other. If you base whatever it is, whatever... Um, um, venture that you want to go out and do, if you base it on solving a certain problem for people and meeting their needs and really understanding what their pains are and, you know, that way you can find a way to give them some kind of let's call it a pain reliever or Panadol <laughs> yeah. and so that you really make whatever you're offering their Panadol, you know, or their morphine to make the pain disappear in some kind of way. Uh, really focus on solving a problem for people if you're going to be an entrepreneur so tell us a little bit how has it been for you how have you identified the problem yeah and how have you gone about how you're gonna solve it just tell us a little bit yeah. from your for journey. example for example from my journey I um I looked at myself by then I was about 27 I think I was about 27 that's five years ago I looked at myself I was a single mom of one kid and I before earlier on in the age, I've never been the type that has always wanted to go out. And even though I'm very, how do you call it? And I'm, I'm a very extroverted person. I'm, I can easily talk to people. But when it comes to dating or getting the right people in, I always found it tough because I don't like going out to town partying. And I feel like that's where many people kind of like are open to, hey, what's up? You want to dance with me? Let's, uh, oh, you know, talking about such subjects. When I'm in professional, you know, settings, then it's not really allowed or you cannot really start bringing up such things so I felt like okay what if I want to get someone what do I do and I felt like the internet has always been 
such a weird thing for me. It's like, I feel like people, I tried it out and I felt like people were always pretending to be something they were not. And when you met them out, it was like, are you really? <laughs> are who, you, who are, who are you? Are you? <laughs> you are definitely not the same person I saw in the picture and stuff. So I felt like, you know what? I think there is a need for those people out there because I've always had a mature mindset. I didn't think there were 27 year or 28 year olds as myself, but I thought of people who are maybe divorced or people who are above 35 five like myself and didn't just have that time and the energy to go through that whole mental I don't know even what you can call it of trying to figure out the dating game what would they do and when I went around and asked say asked different single people in the city what do you do to find is it working out and they're like I found so many successful men and women who are like I don't know what's wrong with me, but it's just not working out. Other people don't meet my qualifications. And when I go out, it just feels like an interview. Everything is just, you know, not really working out when it comes to love. And I'm like, but then who helps out those people? This is really a problem that can be fixed. This is a problem that I can try to solve by becoming a matchmaker. And, you know, since I'm very good at talking to people and I like talking about deep stuff, and so I can really solve this problem. And that's how I, the whole, matchmaking thing came about because personally I could see myself as my own client back then um, I could see myself hiring myself if, if there was someone like that and at the same time when I did the market research there were people that were willing to hire me and pay for my services okay yeah. so you you kind of started with your own problem yeah actually so yeah. and then started to think about how by solving your own problem you could actually help other people yeah. solve their problems and then you went out and made a market research by asking people simply how was it for them was there a space for someone like matchmaker yeah so that's a really really great tip to uh, focus on solving a problem yeah and uh, reflection that sparks on me is actually to make it clear to your potential customers what exactly is the problem that yeah. you are solving yeah. because I think that's something that I have seen often with few businesses yeah. a few websites or few uh, places I enter there and I actually don't know you have no idea what which they're doing problem, <laughs> yeah, which problem are they solving what yeah. can they actually do for me yeah. so I think it's one it sounds so down to earth Yeah. And so simple and so true. Yet. Yet when it comes to you as an entrepreneur and you as a person who builds your company, who builds yeah. your practice, who builds your brand to have it really straightforward. Yeah. That's the problem that I can help you solve. Yeah. I honestly speaking, that's one thing I also see. Like I can go to a website and I look at the website, many websites. I'm like, but what do they really do? I don't get it. Why don't you tell me from the beginning what kind of problem you're solving for me so that I understand what it is you can do for me? Because you have to solve some kind of problem for me as a customer. And instead of me having to call you and ask, I really have to like really like you. If I have to pick up the phone and start asking, what do you do again? What is it you can do yeah. for me what problem are you solving like get really as an entrepreneur figure out what problem are you solving and get that out before first hand and figure out don't only have it in your head but do some market research go out and talk to people that you think you're going to solve the problem for and find out is that really a problem for them or is yeah. it something that you are only facing or that you have in your head and make the numbers count and, okay cool. yeah anna which problem do you want to solve Actually, can I say something else? Because I, I have just one remark and then yeah. maybe I will answer or maybe I will keep it a mystery. Mm. Uh, I was thinking about what you said to find a problem, focus on the problem that you want to solve. But I have to say that some of the entrepreneurs or businesses are not necessarily solving problems. Mm -hmm. They are also bringing pleasure. Mm. So, for instance, I also think that this is something interesting to think about. Mm. For instance, music, yeah. writing, any form of art. Of course, we get some sort of a release, emotional oh, release. Yes. But, for instance, going to a concert yeah. is not solving you a problem. It gives you pleasure. It gives you pleasure. So, or, for instance, uh, designing a fantastic... Uh, handbags that are very niche handbags with some kind of character and story. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily, well, they do sol sol solve a problem of caring things, mm -hmm. but they give you pleasure. They give you something else. And I think it's also relevant to mention yeah. that sometimes with your business, yeah. you can 
give pleasure to people. It's not only giving the release from the pain. Yeah. What do you think about that? I, I think that's a very extremely important point that you're pointing out. And because of that, maybe instead of just saying that solve a problem, the main thing that we could look at, and thank you for pointing that out, Anna, is do your market research. Because at the end of the day, when I say solve a problem, you cannot know what problem you're going to solve unless you go out and do some market research. So it be it a bug that gives you pleasure. You have to go out there and figure out. There are so many different bugs. What is unique? What is different about your bug? What is it that you're going to give to the people that is not already existent, that they cannot get from anywhere else? So you're solving a problem for them, but you only figure that out after you have actually done the market research. You're solving the problem in a way that you're giving them something that is an already not existing of course giving them pleasure too so i like what you said anna and that can actually make me rephrase this point the third point to you know solving a problem do your market research and make sure that when you're doing your market research as anna is saying you give some kind of pleasure but also solve a problem yeah, yeah. very interesting so will you anna tell us which problem or what kind of pleasure do you want to bring <laughs> to the universe? I want to bring a lot of pleasure to the universe. <laughs> <laughs> Not in this way, okay. uh, darling. Uh, well, I think I have, I think I was mentioning that before in uh, several of our programs that I yeah. I want to help people. And I know how this sounds. I want to help people. Like yeah. it, it really is nothing concrete. But there are a couple of projects that are, I'm running. For instance, I am a writer. So I have my own website and I write there. Through mm -hmm. my writing, I want to give people a moment of relaxation, mm -hmm. a moment for reflection, to mm -hmm. challenge them, to ask some kind of a question mm -hmm. uh, to themselves or to inspire them or to also release some sort of emotional load. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a mix of pleasure giving pleasure mm -hmm. so entertaining people mm -hmm. because i i love when people are reading my things and they are smiling or laughing yeah. but also i love when people are saying i read that and it made me think or it was really great because yeah. it helped me to realize something yeah. so that's basically influencing people's mindsets or or, or mood and yeah. i cannot put it in a category because no writer unless i'm writing self-help books yeah it's more of a mix of entertainment and thoughtfulness that i want to bring within this radio marta what problem do you do we want to solve back to you marta <laughs> i ask you this question so you cannot have it back, back. to me <laughs> it's uh, for ha, you to ha, answer ha, ha. Huh. With this radio, the problem that we are solving is that we think that a lot of people that we have met lately, great people, entrepreneurs, mm. startups, experts, uh, musicians, artists, they don't really have an outlet to present themselves and build a network or a tribe. Yeah. And with this radio, one of the things that we want to solve is the problem of not having a place to come, talk about your ideas and connect with others. Uh, so that's, for instance, an idea here. I have also another project, yeah. but I think that we are spending a lot of time on my problem solving. <laughs> so yeah, it was just to give another example to mm -hmm. people and also yeah. reflect a little bit on the solving a problem versus uh, providing some kind of pleasure or entertainment. So mm. thank you. But definitely sure. our ra radio is also supposed to bring pleasure because yeah. we don't want this to be some sort of a boring like old fart. I don't even know if this is an expression <laughs> problem program. We want people yeah. to listen to it and also be entertained, you of know, course. to laugh, to smile. So uh, it's, I think, again, a mix of, of solving a problem and, and, giving, bring, pleasure. and giving pleasure. Absolutely. I okay. agree with you. In this smooth way. Let us move on to uh, the <laughs> lesson learned number four. Yeah. Tell L us what's that. Yeah. Lesson learned number four is three things combined in one. And as I said before, that was discipline, consistency and persistence. And let me break them down. When I say discipline is because I think, again, this goes back to the habits. You have to have certain things that you do at a certain times that you know these are going to help me get to my goal. You're disciplined regardless of what happens. For example, like myself, I'm like, I have to read. I have to meditate regardless of what happens. I have to create that time to meditate every morning. And I have to read, let it be for only 20 minutes. I have to read. So discipline is really, really important. And the second thing is consistency. When you do something, make sure that you're giving it 
not only 100%, but 150%. Make sure that you're presenting your best work. And this can be something hard for us, for some of us, like we talked about before, Mata, if you're a perfectionist and stuff. But just do your best. Make sure that you're not giving your, you know, your attention to your goal or to what you want to achieve only part-time or part of what you can do. Make sure that you're really giving it your all. Bring your whole heart and soul into it and so that you can really see it grow. So that is what I mean by consistency. Make sure that you create something that is unique and different in that way because when you give it your heart and soul, I'm sure the whole world will also feel it and understand it and, you know, be able to be there. And the other thing is persistence. And this brings us back to the thing that we talked about, which is failure. One of the things, you want it or not, that you're going to encounter on your entrepreneurship journey is failure. You are going to fail. If there is any successful leader or person out there who says, I've never failed, they're basically flat out lying. That is not yeah. true. Everyone has failed. We all all fail and it's okay to fail and like you said before Anna what are you learning from your failures so you will fail but be persistent always be persistent keep on going keep on moving forward at the end of the day it's like trying to master a skill when you master something at the end of the day you will really make it so you have to really really be persistent yeah. so this point uh, we have, like when you were explaining what it means and the discipline you have tied to habits, mm. we have already talked about that. Yes, we have. When it, comes about, uh, when it comes to consistency, I would like to remind our listeners that we have also had a show recently about personal branding, mm. where I think this topic has been uh, explored a lot in yeah. that sense. And then persistence, we have also talked about wow. failure and so on. So I will not let us dig in more into no. that topic in this uh, show no. because we have promised our listeners in our first episode that we will end up with a really cool catchy phrase uh, yet so important part yeah. which is the lesson learned number five yeah will you please tell us what that is oh yes i can uh, my lesson learned number five i'm going to put it the way i put it earlier and i'll say it easily please 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 Make sure that you have a personal board of directors if you don't have one yet. Some people say can call them coaches or you can call them mentors or whatever it is, but I, would, I like to call it that because I feel like just like a business has a personal advisory board, has a, an advisory board, we also need that for us as individuals. Have some people that you look up to, people that can really be 100% with you and keep it real with you even when things are not working out or even when you actually like feel like, oh, I'm successful, they still manage to keep you on your toes and you know make you your best self so have some people that you look up to people that can mentor you people that can help you get to where you want to get and especially people that you already see as successful for me this is something I've come to learn that is very very important I'm personally still on the journey of building my personal a board of you know directors I ha I'm not there yet I only have two and I feel like I should at least have four because mm -hmm. they can all bring different uh, things to the table. But just really have that, you know, it is so important because when you have those people, they will ground you. They will not only be there when times are hard and, you know, be able to advise you in the right direction, but they'll also be there when times are really good and even push you that extra mile to get beyond, you know, whatever, to get beyond your own expectations or your own um, limit. So who are who are the people that are on your board of directors and what do they give you? If that's not a secret, of course. Yeah. No, I unfortunately cannot say their names. No, it's okay. No. It's not the yeah. names that we are looking for. Yeah. It's, uh, it's about what type of people these are and yeah. what that relationship gives you. Yeah, absolutely. For example, I do have one of them. She is, um, she is a former, how do you call it? She's a former manager within engineering in uh, Velux and she now started her own business which is really really going well it's also a, some kind of coaching business within companies and it's really going well for her but one of the reasons as to why I have her is because I feel like she has already lived and done the things that I almost want to do 
or that I want to do. They may not be in the same sense as I am. It may not be the same exact thing as I'm doing, but she absolutely has the knowledge to help and elevate me to the next level. Every time I come to her with a question or with doubt when I'm not sure of what to do, she always knows how to put me in the right direction, not by telling me exactly what to do, but by guiding me and making sure that I really do follow my inner guide and besides whatever else she's saying. And that is one of them. And the other one is actually a man <laughs> who is so dear to me. He he's an entrepreneur. He I know always has his own business, has always been. And he's also again a coach within businesses. And for him, he um what he gives me I think is this male perspective that I never really had. I feel like men look at think at things differently than we women. And sometimes he just really says, Cut out the bullshit. And I'm like, Oh, oh okay. What, what, what? I thought we really have to go in depth and we would... No, cut out the bullshit. Go straight to the point. And, and that's what they really can do for me. And sometimes when I feel like, oh, this is really going well, he's like, no, you're not even there yet. Forget it. You, you're not even there yet. You can do so much more. And, and I feel like these are the kind of people that I want to surround myself with. More of these kinds of people that really challenge me and build me and advise me and make me a better person. So it's not too late to drop, you know, people that you feel like don't serve you. It's okay. Drop them. It's all right. Move in a direction that's really helping you go, that's helping you reach your entrepreneurial success. So tell me for those of us who might not have that kind of board of directors yeah. yet, yet. Yeah. and looking to be in entrepreneurs, yeah. how do you establish such a relationship? How do you find this kind of person? That is a great question because for me and this is something I actually learned from uh, Paul Carrick Branson, such an amazing smart man. He had this thing, he had this video whereby he was explaining, I think it was a few years ago or something, whereby he was explaining and saying if you want to get the right mentors and coaches people to get into your network you just can't <laughs> you just can't go and say and some guy I don't remember his name I think he's a Leon sis or something a very huge entrepreneur guy in the US a very successful billionaire said there's so many people who are network vampires out there and <laughs> usually this what this means is that people like you and me are looking for people to have as advisors or you know our advisory board and we just show up and be like hey can you please be my advisor <laughs> <laughs> oh my My advisory but I really admire you so much. You you just want to take, but you're not giving anything. So one of the things that you can do is to figure out which people in your network or which people do you know, even if they're not in your network, that you think are successful in your eyes and that you aspire to be like. And when you find out who those people are, start by following them on social media, for example. And when they do content or set down anything, start commenting, you know, show interest, be there. If they say they're going to be a certain place, show up, be there. Because the more you comment and the more you are present, trust me, this person is going to start knowing that you are actually there. They will notice you. And when you, they show up in a certain place and you actually are there in person and you present yourself, I'm sure they'll have something clicking. Oh, she's the one that, you know, comments. So by the time, and after you do that, you find a way of creating value for them in some way so that you don't show up as someone who is saying, can you please just help me with, you know, become my mentor? But instead you find a way of, you know, give and take. It's always mm -hmm. a give and take relationship. Find a way to create value for them, to serve them too, so that they get something out of their relationship. That's such a great tip. Yeah. You know, when you start giving, yeah. then something comes back Absolutely. to you usually in a natural, organic way. Yes. Thank you, Rachel, so much for being our guest. Thank you for having me, Matt Thank and you Anna. So Thank much you for much. sharing your beautiful, yeah. deep, authentic lessons learned. Thank you. From this very fulfilling, difficult, <laughs> rough, great, full of growth road of an entrepreneur. Yeah, that we are all on. <laughs> and yeah. thank you, Anna, also for sharing your deep philosophical thoughts uh, yeah. with us on that journey. And thank you, Lessa, for making the show sound good. And uh, thank you all, our listeners, and we will hear you on our next show. Yes, yeah. thank you. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 
You are listening to You've Got Five Options show, where we solve your life challenges. Remember that you can visit our website, the5options.com, where you can submit your challenge or find our previous challenges. That's all, folks.